Good morning. What a joy it is to join you again this Sunday morning to worship together. Welcome. Praise the name of the Lord. God has brought us through another week and here we stand in the threshold of this week and we are grateful to him. He gives meaning to our lives. So let's look to him today as we worship him together. Those of you who are in your home, especially the members and friends of Word of Life International Church, we want to extend our welcome, a warm welcome to you. And of course, everyone who has joined us today and will join us, we want to say welcome. Let's call you to worship this morning with the words of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, a well-known verse. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I don't know about you, but I need the grace of God. I need his help in my life, and somehow I believe that you do too. Why don't you bow with me as together we welcome God's presence. Bow your head in your heart, and let's look to God today. Our Father, we still our hearts and we come to you, the Lord of all the earth. We agree that there is none like you. Thank you for your mercies, for your loving kindness, for your rich blessings upon our lives. Thank you that we can gather again in the sanctuary, in our homes. Thank you that we can lift our voice in praise to your wonderful name. God, we can do nothing without you, so we invite your presence. We pray your rich anointing that gives us the ability to be effective in doing the work of God. And so, Father, let your presence be rich today. Guide us, direct our thoughts, anoint a psalm and word today, and use the same to nourish your spirit as we continue to walk with you. Father, let your blessings flow now. We yield, we submit to you and to your will, and we invite you to have your way. Thank you for hearing us, for we pray in the strong name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Amen. It is a delight to welcome the Andersons. They're going to lead us in the presence of God this morning. Praise God for them. Supplied my every need, and I 
And your presence is enough for me Oh, 
so much. It's all about Jesus. Word of God tells us, Jesus said, the time has come and now is when they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Oh, I love to hear beautiful singing, but if the singing doesn't really come from the heart, uh, really the Holy Spirit anointing, then it's just song. But when it's from the heart, that's what it's all about. We have to make Jesus the center of our worship and all that we do. Praise the Lord. Thank you again to John and, and, and Vanessa for bringing us into God's presence in song. We want to continue to uh, worship our Lord at this morning. And we want to do so with the reading of the Word of God. And the Word of God today is taken from the book of Philippines, the epistle, Paul's epistle to the Philippines, chapter 3. And we want to read from God's Word from verse 1 to verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to verse 12. The Word of God. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal persecuting the church, 
touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but down that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is true, the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained. E neither either were already perfect. But I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his wonderful word. Praise the Lord. We want to continue to worship as we do so, why don't we go uh, before the Lord in a word of prayer? And as usual, we want to bring your requests uh, before the Lord. If there is a need in your life, at home, in your home, on the job, in your person, I am here to remind you that God is able the word of God tells us we should cast our cares upon him. Paul tells us that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we think or desire. God is able. And what is even more important, he is with us. He is near you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's go to him as a, 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 a father, a child to a father. And let's petition him. He has all the answers. He is capable. He is able to minister to us if we would but put our faith and our trust in him. Praise the Lord. We want to especially look to God on the behalf of those that are suffering in the state of Texas. You know what has happened there. The media has indicated that uh, power uh, is almost restored to the entire state. But many are still suffering broken pipes and the home is still cold because they're unable to heat uh, their homes. Oh, the condition must be dreadful for many. But we want to pray that God will comfort and God will open doors and he will provide. And that they will be able to put their lives back together again as soon as possible. And so let's pray for our brothers, let's pray for our sisters, for we are our brother's keeper. The scripture tells us, let's walk in their shoes. It could have been us. And so let's believe the Lord on their behalf. We want to continue to pray for the Maria Martinez family members that God will visit. And he will restore health and meet their every need. Again, we continue to pray for the pastors and friends of the Potomac Ministry Network, that God would uh, bless them today as they worship across the tri-state area, uh, West Virginia, Virginia, and of course the state of Maryland. We want to believe the Lord to minister as they worship Him this today. And those that are still in the grips of COVID-19 across these United States and even around the world, Thank God um, we are told that they, it's somehow decreasing or coming down from uh, where it was a number of weeks ago. We give God praise. We give him thanks. He is merciful. He hears and he answers prayer. But we want to continue to believe him that those that are in the grips of this dreaded virus would experience restoration of health. Again, we want to pray for our missionaries around the world and of course our home missionaries 
across the United States. Let's pray that God will bless them and continue to use them for his glory and honor. And the church that we want to lift up before the Lord today is Hope Assembly of God in Ellicott City. It's pastored by Ted and Kimberly Manning. He is Lord Executive Presbyter. We want to pray that God will bless and God will continue to use him as he reaches Ellicott City with the gospel of the Lord. And you who are in your home, I know that there might be a need in your life. Let's bring it before the Lord as we go before him in prayer this morning. Let's believe the Lord to minister to that need. Bow your head with us as we go before him in a word of prayer. Father, we love you so much. And we're grateful that we can come into your presence this morning. Thank you for bringing us through the past week. Oh God, you've been good to us. You've spared and kept our lives. You've preserved our lives. And you brought us to this moment in time. Often we take the blessings of life for granted. And being able to walk and talk and think. And, and recall and feel and see and hear. God, we take them for granted until we lose them. But we are grateful today. We are thankful for your faithfulness. For all that you have done for us. And we come back like that one leper to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. David calls them tender mercies. Oh, we pray today that you will visit us here in the sanctuary and those in their homes, whatever need that there might be in our lives. We lay them at your feet. And God, we are looking to you. Uh, because of your son Jesus, we pray that you will stretch forth your hands to minister powerfully in our lives. Take charge. God, I pray you'll dispel fears and doubts. In the name of Jesus, cause faith to arise. Whatever the condition, whatever the need, whatever the situation, we give it to you. And God, we are looking to you to open doors and to minister to needs. In the name of Jesus, we pray and declare victory over every situation. Father, we are looking to you. We are dependent on you. Oh, like the prophet of all, we are going to stand on the wall, so to speak. And we are going to see you bring your word to pass in our lives. And so, God, in anticipation, we want to say thanks. Thank you so much for hearing an answer in prayer. And now, Lord, we lift the request to you today. We pray for our brothers and sisters across the state of Texas who are in need. God, we thank you for the restoration of the electricity. Still, there are some that are without electricity. We pray that, Lord, you will touch those involved. That somehow, Father, everything will come back as it was just a few days ago. I pray for those, oh Lord. Lord, who was suffering from a lack of water and uh, broken pipes. I pray that you will, oh Lord, lift their heads and you would encourage their hearts this morning and you would help them as they seek to put their lives back together. Send help, Father. I pray that you would intervene and you will work everything out in the name of Jesus, that there will be complete restoration across the the state of Texas. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that in a time of trouble we can run to you and find help and solace. And so God we give you the glory and the praise today for those who were sick with COVID and Lord other sicknesses across our country. We pray for intervention today. Lord a restoration. We pray that you will touch 
touch and heal and restore and those that are involved in the helping process we continue to ask you to bless them with energy with grace with all that they need God to continue the work of helping those that are sick bless them today or nurses or doctors or technicians those oh Lord at work are behind the scenes in whatever level we commend them to you and we thank you for them and ask that your grace will fill their lives oh we give you glory today bless the pastors and friends of the Potomac Ministry Network across these states we pray your anointing Lord as we meet together virtually and God in person we pray that the rich anointing will come upon your church and upon your, your servants use us to speak a word of encouragement today that would inspire your children as we continue to walk with you and love you draw us closer today use word and song Lord to nourish your spirit and we will give you the glory and the praise thank you for hope oh God assembly in elegant city bless God and Ted Manning and his wife anoint them and Lord and their associates I pray for grace I pray for a vision I pray for a passion for oh God and for souls in the name of Jesus meet them today Lord as they worship bless them and use them to be a light God across elegant city I pray that you would send revival in the name of Jesus that lives will be touched and many will be born to call you blessed we give you glory this morning bless the murderness family. We pray, Lord, for healing. We pray for restoration. We pray that you will work today in their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for hearing us. Now let your anointing be upon us. Lord, as we minister your word, use us ah, to be a blessing, to be a source of blessing to your children. Bless all, everyone that hears today. Ah, may your will be accomplished. And Father, we pray for those that are homeless and hungry. Lord, across the nation, those, oh Father, who seemingly are without hope, give them hope today. Oh, walk alongside of them and lift their heads. In the name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit, who is ever present and ever helpful, minister to them, Father. Open doors and minister to their needs. Provide a way where there is no way. You promise you will do it and we thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank God for hearing and answering our prayer. Praise the Lord. Let's continue our worship this morning. This month, of course, we celebrate Black History Month. Thank God for those who have made outstanding contributions to our nation over the years. Many are, we often talked about, they are upfront and well-known, but there's some that are well-known, are not well-known in our history that have made outstanding contributions and we want to recognize them for the contributions that they have made. Today we celebrate Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells. She was born an enslaved person on July the 16th, 1862 in Holly Springs, Mississippi. Wells received her early schooling at Shaw University, now Russ College. However, at the age of 16, she had to drop out and tragedy struck her family, leaving Wells, the oldest child, to care for her siblings. In 1882, Wells moved with her sisters to Memphis, Tennessee, 
to live with an aunt. She continued her education at Fisk University in Nashville. Wells became a civil rights activist and journalist. She wrote about issues of race and politics in the South and eventually became an owner of a newspaper. In 1892, a lynching in Memphis led Wells to begin an anti-lynching campaign. In 1893, Wells published a red record, a personal examination of lynching in America. In 1898, Wells brought her anti-lynching campaign to the White House, leading a protest in Washington, D.C and calling for President William McKinley to make reforms. Wells died on March the 25th, 1931, in Chicago, Illinois. Today, we celebrate the life and contribution of Ida B. Wells. May her memory be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, Let's turn to God's Word. God's Word is central to who we are, to our church. It's the Word that nourishes our spirit and gives us that ability to walk on with hope and with confidence in our God. We have been looking at or focusing on steadfastness, the past, uh, number of weeks, as a matter of fact, it's the focus of the month. Steadfastness. God wants us to be steadfast, to keep on, keeping on, so to speak. Praise the Lord. He wants us to be determined and to walk in confidence in His ability to take care of us. And so um, we have been looking, our focus again has been steadfastness, and our theme has been a Christ or inspiring example. With Christ as our example, we can accomplish anything. We can go anywhere. Amen. When He is our strength, when we keep our eyes on Him, He helps us to be all that He wants us to be. Today, we want to continue this focus and steadfastness. And my subject for today, or topic for today, is we have not yet attained. We have not yet attained. And the text is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. We have read to you 12 verses but let's read again in your hearing verses 12, 13, and 14. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I know that um, some of you, if not all of you, who have been listening, uh, you know, I, I get the impression that sometimes, you know, uh, there might be one or two who might not be listening. But if you've been listening, you know that I have dealt with this um, a chapter or this epistle several times over the last couple of years, particularly uh, in last year. We, we looked at this chapter, chapter 3, um, in some detail. But I keep coming back to it because there are some truths here, some principles here that I believe that the Lord wants us to get a hold of, that they might become a part of a character, so to speak, and inform how we live our lives. 
The Apostle Paul was a giant. God used him powerfully in order to instruct the church, to encourage the church, to, to love Jesus and to desire him more than silver or gold. And so somehow I felt led um, this week to, to go back to the third chapter of uh, the book of Philippines and speak uh, in, in, in a, a different um, way, so to speak, uh, on the subject we have not yet attained. Those words really leapt out of the word of God at me. And I, I want to invite you to pray with me that as I speak to um, uh, this topic, that God would use me to say something that might be a source of inspiration to all of us. Father, we need the Holy Spirit to help us and direct us and to use your word to inspire us. And so we open our hearts and our minds to you. Speak through me. And Lord, deposit truth in the lives of your children that will change and transform us and make us better equipped to love you and serve you. Anoint me now, we pray. And we will give you the glory and praise through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Let us continue our focus this morning on the theme of steadfastness. Using Christ as our inspiring example. He is our inspiring example. After Paul's encounter with Christ and the Damascus Road experience, his passion was to know Christ and to be like him. And that ought to be your passion. That ought to be your determination or desire to be like Jesus, to walk with him and to image him from day to day. In our text this morning, Paul illustrates to the Philippines and I would like to believe that the people of God, wherever and whatever century we live in, how to be steadfast through the process of growing in Christ. Several times in the New Testament, the Christian life is pictured as a race. And Paul himself has used this metaphor, this image, in order to illustrate or to demonstrate how the believer must walk with God and must love the Lord. We see uh, verses pertaining to uh, life as a race, the Christian life as a race. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24 and 25. Also in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Paul speaks of the, the Christian life as a race. And of course in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. We see uh, this analogy to the Christian life. In our text the apostle uses the analogy of a race to describe his own spiritual journey. And he offers some important athletic principles to the people of God. That the people of God can use to win the race that is set before us. And so I pray that God would use uh, the text this morning to encourage and inspire our hearts. I want to say up front that to win the Christian race like an athlete. We have to be determined. The child of God, the people of God have to be determined. I believe we have to have a winning and overcoming attitude. And above all, we must look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so let's ferret out at least three principles. You know, um, you know what I uh, do, my method of sharing God's word we always have three principles and sometimes I don't reach them all but let's trust the Holy Spirit to help us uh, this morning I believe Paul in our text has given us three important principles that I want to share with us this morning first we have not yet attained our goal the believer the church the people of God we have not yet attained our goal. And secondly, 
Paul encourages us to forget anything that may distract us from being effective disciples. Paul is encouraging us to forget anything that hinders whatever uh, confronts us in the past or even in the present that hinders us from being effective as children of God. He is encouraging us to forget. And lastly, Paul says we must press toward the goal of seeing Jesus. We must press towards the goal of seeing Jesus. Let's look first at the thought we have not yet attained our goal. Paul was responding to some individuals in our text who felt that they had reached spiritual maturity. They were perfect. They had needed nothing. They had a calling of God and they didn't need uh, to be encouraged. They didn't need any instruction from God's word. They didn't need anyone to tell them anything. But Paul knew better. Paul knew that he had not reached perfection yet and never will in this side of heaven. May I say to you that uh, this side of heaven as you and I go through this life, we will never reach perfection until we see Jesus. As long as we are in this life, we're going to have our struggles. We're going to have our ups and downs. We're going to have our blind spots and we're going to make mistakes. But thank God, God has given us a helper in the person of the Holy Spirit. And as you and I are yield to him, as we surrender to him, as we invite him to take charge of our lives and, and, and help us in the Christian life as we, as we live our lives from day to day. Help us with our attitudes. Help us with, with, with our behavior in general. We need the help of God. I don't know about you, but I need God's help. I often recall um, when I lived in the Boston area over in, in uh, Somerville, I would go to a, a church on Friday evenings, a Messianic church. and uh, It was people or the community was a, an Indian community. And one lady would, would uh, stand and from time to time she would testify. And I recall her um, hearing or uh, giving a testimony. And in the testimony, uh, she spoke of, of her prayer. And, and her prayer was help. That's all she said as she would call out to God, help. I want you to know that, that I need help from God. All of us need help from God, but we have to have the attitude. We have to have the disposition. We have to recognize that we need help. And as we need, as we, we open our hearts and recognize our need, we are better able to call upon God uh, for help in our lives. Until then... Until we recognize or need um, of God's help, uh, we would never be able to receive uh, help from the Lord. We have to keep on running as believers. You and I are going towards a prize of seeing Jesus, of being like him. That's uh, uh, the goal of the Christian life, to, to grow in Christ and, and to be like Jesus. It must be our determination. You have heard the saying, the race is not for the swift, but those who endure to the end. As you and I uh, continue the pilgrim journey, it's a life of ups and downs. It's a life of struggles. All of us uh, have our struggles regardless of our station in life. We do have uh, our struggles uh, and our ups and our downs. But I am so glad that the race is not just for those who uh, are better placed. Or those who can run faster. Those who have all the bells and whistles so to speak. But it's for those who trust Jesus. It's those who look to God. Who recognize their need. And that they have not attained. And, and they still struggle with, with, with desires. And uh, appetites. And, uh, and whatever else. We need. We know that we need help from God. 
The Apostle Paul encourages in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. He says, therefore, therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, Paul is encouraging the church at Corinth to be steadfast and unmovable. Why? Paul had a keen sense of human nature. He knows uh, our weaknesses, our ups and downs, our failures, uh, our desires that sometimes can be carnal. And he recognized our need and so he encouraged steadfastness. He encouraged uh, the first century church to be unmovable and to always abound, always be trusting and looking to Jesus for help, uh, for direction and for his blessing without uh, the help of the Holy Spirit that God uh, has sent us. You and I would not be able to make it but thank God, when we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can do anything. Yeah. We can move any mountain or climb any mountain. We can overcome any difficulty, whatever challenge that comes into our lives. We can overcome with the help of God. God's desire for the people of God is that we become like Jesus. You know, I really don't want to be like anybody else. There are some 